All right, so we're gonna do a video that's an unboxing and an install of a torque lift eco hitch on a 2017 Chevy Bolt. The thing that uh, my video is gonna do that others don't, because there are other installation videos out there that are really great. But the first thing, we don't cut all the way through the bumper. We leave an uh, inch and a half strip to sort of reinforce the bumper. The second thing is, is that we don't skip the difficulty of getting the middle torque screw in the wheel well out, which many of the other videos skip. Um, and the third is we're not leaving out any of our problems. So I'm leaving that all in. So I'm erring on the side of keeping it longer just so you can see where the potential problem areas are. I'm definitely not super handy, which is why I got a friend to help me. And this was new to him too. So we were doing it, both doing it for our first time. I'm going to put links to down in the description for all the different sections of the install so you can skip to whatever part you need to skip to. So here we go. Ooh, that looks heavy. Yeah, it's big. The Torque Lift Eco Hitch is super well packaged. It's protected very, very well. Actually, probably protected against damaging the other packages it's being shipped with because this thing is built like a tank. There we go. Dad, you need to take the Ooh, it's heavy. Off. Oh, that's so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> And it looks like this right here is the instruction manual. The instruction manual, as you can see, is pretty basic. The pictures aren't wonderful, but they're clear enough to get you through it. And I'll note some other places in the installation where it's a little bit confusing. So the Torque Lift Eco Hitch is uh, rated at 300 pounds tongue weight, 2,000 pounds towing capacity, but I'm not going to be approaching anywhere near that. I'll be doing mostly like bike racks and maybe storage um, because the bolt isn't even rated to, to tow. So if you save the cardboard from the, the hitch box, you can use that as a place to lay down behind your bumper and to actually set the bumper on top of um, if you need a place to set it down that's softer than just pavement or concrete or if you don't have a grassy area next to the car. Also, I use the bag for the instruction manual to put all the screws in, so if you want to do that, you can do that too. With that, here's the installation. Step one, secure the vehicle with the emergency brake and truck and front wheels. Let's go. Open the truck, remove the two screws near the rear lights. It's good. exactly like that. Do I want to put them in something so we don't lose them? Yes, you do. <laughs> let me, uh... <laughs> let me, uh... Here, let's put them in here. Let's just use the things that they gave us. One of these days I'll actually buy a magnetic parts tray. They're really handy and they're incredibly cheap. And every time I go to the auto parts store, if you get to pick one up with me. But they're really nice because when you kick it over, Oh, you're both stuck. Fine. All right, man. These were step one. Step two. Locate the three screws on the inside of the wheel well and remove them with the Q15 Torx wrench. There. Do you have oh. another wrench? I can do the other side while you do that one. Uh, no, but now I see why in the video oh, the guy had a right angle. Got it. Is that going to be an issue? Uh, only if I don't have Torx bits that will fit in the right angle. Could be our first uh, glitch. Okay, so the problem is there are three Torx bolts, and they, we need a right angle. Money? Oh, money. <laughs> Donald just saved us from having to take the tire off. That's a good thing. I do have the correct adapter somewhere, but this works right enough. All right. All right, once with washers. Those are the wheel well ones. Oh, plastic washers. This will be the tightest one, probably, right? Yeah, it always is. There you go. The, least clearance. the biggest time suck of the entire operation was this, not having the correct uh, Torx tool to get these Torx screws off. So, fair warning, having the right tools makes all the difference in this installation. Really tight in there? I mean, you can push it in a ways. Were you doing that? I don't really want to do that to a car that's not mine. And also, thank you for doing this on a uh, 88 degree day. Yeah, at least it's not a 106 degree day. There are 
some screws on the underside right there. I'm gonna take those off. Righty tighty. Mm -hmm. Nice. One eighth of a turn. Let me just make sure these are the same size. They sure are. All right, I'm coming back over here to the other side to get this one off. There's some clips. Hopefully they'll stay in position. Yeah, they look like they're pretty solid. Yeah, right. Is that, are you still working on that middle one? Of course we're still working on the middle one. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, that's rough. That's crazy that it's that tight. Yeah, it really is. Usually after the first couple of turns, we're pretty much in business, but yeah, not on this one. Only that one. Well, let's go see the other side. Oh. That's fine. That's the easy one. Let's do the other easy one. We'll save the hard one for last. Looks good. And our nemesis. Just push it in a little ways, man. Oh, he's going. I'm manual. not gonna, not gonna wreck your new. You're going manual. I don't think you'd wreck it, dude. That does not look like fun. You're already sweating. The bumper's not even off. I was sweating before I started. <laughs> that was way easier than the other side. Good to know. They make it seem so easy. Well, if you put some music on and do a couple of smash cuts, we'll be done in 15 minutes too. <laughs> Using an automotive trim removal tool, which we didn't buy, remove the two plastic retaining pop rivets on the underside of the rear bumper. I think those are... Do you have anything that's plastic? Rigid plastic? I usually use a screwdriver. I'm just I'm careful. Uh, There's usually a rim like this. Yeah. You kind of do a little shimmy sham in there. Like such to get it started. And then you pull it. Nice. And you try not to break it. Good. Nice work. And then. Nice one. That's the other half of it. Got it. All right, so this is what we're talking about. It looks pretty dirty. Yeah. There you go. All those wonderful little stones are what really helps keep them in there. Right. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> Going in the bag. The usual thing when people try to take those out for the first time, they don't realize it's a two-piece operation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just try to run yeah. the whole thing out, and that destroys it real fast. Yeah. Next, gently pry back the wheel while body trim to reveal the hidden torque side screws. Use a T10. Gently peel back. You got a T10? I think I got all the T's. So at this point, the instructions say a T10 Torx, uh, but at least in, in my 2017 Bolt, uh, a T15 worked fine. I think all of the bolts that we took out were T15. So uh, just be aware of that. Uh, the instruction manual might be incorrect. If you look in here, you can see that this section is kind of inserted down into the bumper section, oh, right? Uh-huh. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm, because it is. Gently. Yeah, I was gonna say, that looks less than gentle. There you go. Come over here. Oop. How far do we gotta pull this thing off, like all the way? Enough to reveal the hidden Torx head screws, C5 and 6. How many, just one or multiple? Because I mm -hmm. see one already. It says the hidden screw. Well, so that's probably the hidden screw right here. Probably this one, we probably didn't need to do that third one. Yeah, we needed to. Definitely. All right, let's see. Length of that is similar to the first ones we pulled out. They, they can stay in. You don't have to take those out. Well, putting it back together. It's a lot easier just to give them a lap. You know, plastic oh, lip. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're taking these out, the clips out, so you can just put them back on the bumper and then smack them in. Exactly other side there you go so this way we can just line them up with the holes got it hit it with the heel of your hand that's smart and then call it done but this way i can kind of massage them out without destroying them because these are pretty special looking these are not your standard you're like you're not getting that at the hardware store no okay. it'll do better on the other side too 
So if you if you can't quite see what he's doing here, what he's doing is he's reaching up behind that material that's in the wheel well, and he's pinching the end of that clip so that it releases easily and he doesn't have to pull hard to get it out. And he's doing that just to save the clip, even though you'll probably be fine just pulling them out. They'll just snap out. Here's the first one. Come on, buddy. There we go. And three, All right, we so you can't just pull these to. white clips out first. Yeah. Did you do it from behind? Did you squeeze yeah, it from you, behind? if you get your hand back there and give it a good squeeze, there's not a lot to grab onto, but nice. if you got the forearm strength, certainly made life a lot easier. Done. All right, moving on. Got it. Next page. On the inside of the rear bumper, unplug the main wire connector. Some people have had some trouble reattaching. Let's save. It's right here. That one. All right. I don't see why how that would be tough to. Do you want some like protective eyewear? Yeah. I don't believe in it. You don't believe in it. Right. Hold on. Wait. There are no other clips we have to undo. Just that. That was it. Yeah. All right. I think the fact that it's got a locking mechanism on it may throw some people. Gently peel off the bumper, starting from the wheel well of one side right. and the alternating to the other until the bumper starts to slide off. Cool. One thing I would definitely recommend is watching the e-trailer instructional video on how to remove the bumper. Much clearer. Uh, it does take some force to get off, so that part does feel a little bit like... Yeah, that's probably the toughest part in terms of getting oh, something to so unclip. There you go. Good. All right. Hey, oh. Once we get it done, let's just make sure not to drop the uh, the bumper. Because I think once it comes, it comes. I think tip it up a little bit. Yep. Hold on. I think we, we got to attack the right here. That's it. It's all good. Okay. Let's find a... Uh, I was going to put it right here. I see you put it over in the grass. In the grass? Yeah. Out of the way where it's not going to get stepped on. There it is. Super. Got it. Next up. This we have to take off. Mm -hmm. But is that the next step? The next step, step they want us to measure and cut. Oh, really? Want to do that last? Well, this we, I guess this can stay attached, right? What is it, just zip tied on? Or? No, it's, it's, it's on there with some fasteners of some sort. We can leave that though, and then it'll just drop down here, right? Yeah, that should be, as long as it's got the play in it. Move the aluminum crash guard with an M10 suckage. At this point, we're just removing the bumper bar, uh, removing the, the six nuts that hold the bumper bar in place. And I didn't get a close up of us actually putting the hitch on, but it's it's by far the most self-explanatory thing of the video, and you can see that in other instructional videos. So I'm sorry I didn't get a close up of that, but it's it's going to be pretty obvious once you get that uh, the bumper bar off. So there it is, the hitch installed. Just put these on hand tight for now because there is a little bit of play on the hitch just in terms of whether it can move left or right. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the center point of the bumper bar and then just line up the center of the receiver with the bumper just to be certain that we, we've got this on correctly. Your favorite, hold that end. Yep. To me, it looks like it's a little bit to the right. To this side? Yeah. I mean, when I stand way back here. If anything, I think it's got to go a shade to the left. That's what I mean. To me, that looks a little better. Good? Sure, why not? What do you think? It's your car. Yeah, it is my car. <laughs> You're right about that. I mean, to me, that the line you drew looks pretty close to dead center now. Well, we'll make our cutout to measure, like I said. And then if it looks like we're not centered in the cutout, then we can uh, shift it whichever way. Right. Where's your tool for cutting? What are we using? Uh, I'm not quite sure on that one yet. This is the one thing I don't understand, right? Which is what? They have a cut you a six by three rectangle. Yeah. That is clearly not a rectangle. The pictures in the manual can look a little confusing, especially when it comes to the cutout uh, for the uh, 
the hitch. Uh, it does kind of look like a trapezoid in the pictures they provide, but rest assured it's a rectangle. So measuring just a six by three is going to get you where you need to go. This doesn't look like it's going to be too terribly difficult to measure out. No. We're just going to measure from that, those little knobs in the plastic, right? I don't know. I mean, I would just go halfway, halfway. Well, that's our center point right there. There's a little knob right there. Is it? Yeah, right here. You want to go off of just that? That's dead center. <laughs> Your confidence. I like the confidence. Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty, pretty dead center, right? Yeah, there's this little seam right here. The center point, yeah. You can see in the plastic, and that seems oh. to be dead center. Oh, nice. Yeah, how convenient. Very convenient. There's a very, very faint seam line right here that's kind of the center. There's also this knob, and we're kind of almost right in the middle of that. Three inches by six inches and he's getting a straight edge so we can draw that line. Now what we're gonna do is different from what's in the manual. We're gonna go about an inch and a half up and cut our hole from there. All right, so we just drew this on here. All right, so this part, I skipped over the part where we drew in the second cut suggested by the manual. And to show you the difference, what I'm outlining now in red is what the manual suggests that you cut, and that would cut all the way through the bumper. What we end up cutting is what I'm showing you now in red outline, and we leave a one and a half inch strip of the bumper intact, so we're actually cutting a hole into the bumper instead of cutting all the way through it. And based on some instruction I got online, uh, we're thinking of trying to salvage a little bit of an edge here so that the bumper feels more reinforced. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this, 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 and this. Donald seems very skeptical. I feel skeptical now too that I look at it. This ends up being the main part where the receiver comes through and this is for the back part. And uh, we'll see if that works. So just for good practice rather than cutting, measure once cut once, Let's measure twice cut once. Clean up that line just a little. You were like, when you asked if I could film this, I didn't know you weren't gonna work. <laughs> well, I knew you weren't gonna work when you asked me to do it. Right? <laughs> hey, wait. <laughs> You're being extra careful. Well, we're about to cut your bumper. Yeah, like I told you though, if we end up really mucking it up, the part to replace it is 150 bucks. Oh yeah, the bottom lip is a separate part. Yep. All right. How do you want to do it? You can drill a hole right down the middle. No, you just drill them in the corners. Oh really? Yeah, so you'll drill a hole right here, you'll drill a hole here. You'll be able to cut that easily enough. Anywhere you need to turn, you gotta drill a hole. So there, 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 and there will all be holes. <laughs> Got the plug in there. It's okay. I'll have a whole bunch in there. What did you do to my car? Holes in it. <laughs> Looks good, man. Cool. Now. Wait, is that how you're going to cut it? Yeah, that's really how I'm gonna cut it. I do have a handle for these, God knows where it is. I'm not gonna bore you with all the sawing and, and filing that he did, uh, but you can make this a much faster job by using a rotary tool or a Dremel or something like that. Um, this ended up working out fine, but just fair warning then. <laughs> You're like, I got calluses. I right. don't anymore. Should we throw it up there? So after the initial cut, we threw the bumper back on just to make sure that the fit was okay. Ultimately, we ended up needing to shave a little bit more off the sides, probably about the Sharpies lines worth of width to, to, uh, to get a better fit. <laughs> I was gonna build this a DIY, but it's really more a do it yourself with the help of a friend and actually he's gonna do everything. I mean, you need two sets of hands. Even if the other set of hands isn't handy, like doing this on your own would be a nightmare. But I think you can get very decent results with 
a set of metric sockets, a set of torques, a set of right angle torques, hacksaw blade, hole saw drill. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Should we do it? The goal is not to have to force it on too hard. Okay. Obviously, we're going to have to push it a little bit to get around that receiver flange. But once it pops on, it just has to come. It might not be clear what's happening here. So when we're putting the bumper on with its final cut, um, it takes a little bit of jostling to get the bumper over the back end of the hitch. So the way that we did it was actually putting the receiver through the hole first, and then you have to make sure not to clip the bumper in at the top because what you need to do is you need to actually pull it back towards you, the top of the bumper back towards you. And then as you're pushing in the bottom of the bumper, that way the back end of the bumper fascia will slide behind the hitch and up. And it happens pretty quickly in the video. So I'm gonna show it to you twice. There we go. Maybe if we rotate it down. Yep, buddy, you got it. Exactly right. All right, my clip just went all the way in again, so. There we go. Maybe if we rotate it down. Yep, buddy, you got it. Exactly right. All right, my clip just went all the way in again, so. Nice work, dude. Team effort, man. All right, there's that inch and a half. It's definitely enough. It's more than enough. It's a good fit. Once the clips are back on. Thanks, buddy. Hey, no problem. Looks good. You know what? I agree. That is some pretty stealth work, man. Doesn't even look like you cut a hole in your bumper, then drummed it, and then filed it. <laughs> well, I didn't. <laughs> wee, wee. Royal wee. Yeah, baby. All right, let's uh, button, it up. button it up. I don't know what the towing capacity is of this, but I will probably stick to bike racks. And... It's 300, 2,000. 300 ton weight, 2,000. Really? Yeah. But that, that's that is the, a surprise. That's the hitch. That's not the car. No, 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 yeah. The car is actually not rated to tow. Okay. Uh, yes, it is a combination. You can put a class three hitch on just about anything. Yeah. Say so what? We're just going in reverse. That's right. So T10s? No, it was the uh, plug the wires. Let me uh, out. Balls. What, what happened? The plug is now between the bumper and the bar rather than on top where it needs to be. Oh boy. We are gonna have to unclip this bumper. Oh really? Yes. We got the plug caught right here. Oh shnikes. <laughs> unclip like this side a yeah. little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even think you need to go unclip it the whole way. Yep, that's good. Oh wow, I need a lot more play. All right, it's on tap. All right. All right, might wanna tell the folks at home, that's a life pro tip. Don't get the plug caught in front of the bumper. Don't get the plug caught yeah. out of the bumper. Right now I'm quite... trying to put this plug in by feel, okay. which is not working out well for me. Did you get it? Yes. <laughs> yes. But do me a favor yeah. and go utilize the rear turn signals and brake lights and things. Okay, yep, good. T10s, the hidden screws. Maybe it's all their instructions. Maybe they're all T15s and we just took it out with a T10. Yeah, maybe. And then we just go back in with the clips. Uh-huh. Just punch them in. Well, first line up the bottom. The bottom, right? Here you go. Yep. Okay. Look at you. A little shimmy shimmy. <laughs> Your hands dirty and everything. Oh, look at this one. So here Donald is putting back in the, the plastic rivets on the underside of the bumper fascia. We practice to really take the key way where you can use it. And then we're putting in the, the torque screws on the, the underside of the bumper. What is the material that the wheel wells are made of? You know, I have never seen anything like this before in my life. It looks really cheap. I mean, I'm sure it's done for lightness. It's probably it's probably also done for cheapness because they really cheaped out on a lot of things with this car uh, to make it affordable. 
Alright, well, I mean, an affordable's got its place in the world. Otherwise, you buy a Tesla. Ooh, this is going in tight. I'm not sure I got this right. They're tight. Just make sure you don't, like, cross-thread it up in there. Yeah, I'm a little worried that that's what's happening. But it's not, you're not putting a screw into metal. If we had the right tool for the for the wheel well, this would have been a much, much quicker job. All told, I think we spent about an hour and 45 minutes getting this done. Um, if we were to do it again, given the experience that we have now, I think it would take us maybe an hour or under. So these are back on. One, two, three. On that side. One, two, three. Good to go. I think it's a little bit crooked though. We might want to just push it over a little bit. We're right on that tomorrow. <laughs> Looks good, dude. Nice work. Anyone else with the Chevy Bolt, I'll send, send your way. No problem. Does it look different? What do you really? see? Really? What do you see that's different? Just a square. It looks barely different. What is that? Square. It's a square. By far the most important thing to have is a Donald. If you can find a Donald, you're gonna have a lot easier time doing it. All right, guys? Mm. Do you guys have a Donald? No. No Donald? Do you have a Donald? Mm. Oh, you guys gotta get a Donald. Are you sure you don't have a Donald in your toolbox? Yeah. What? I don't even have a toolbox. Well, you don't need a toolbox, but you do need a Donald. I don't need one. You go, go buy one. I don't need one. Go buy a Donald. No. All right, you guys ready to go biking? All right, let's go. No, yeah.